Ante is angry and upset. He walks through the ruins of his life, showing us the remains of the Grand Hotel Kupari. Kupari, a tourist resort at the eastern point of the Croatian coastline. During the Yugoslavian War, ships shelled the historic area. In past times, it was world famous. Tito, Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, they were all here to stay overnight or to eat. Ante remembers the day he served Yasser Arafat. The cook was late, the plate too hot, and Ante burnt his hands while preparing the fish. He shows us the exact place where Mikhail Gorbachev sat down for dinner, just under this broken roof. It's very hard for me to see this. I spent my whole working life here, and now, when I come back here to see these empty ruins, it's really tough for me. It almost makes me cry. It's the place in my memories. This hotel was my life. Kupari, 27 hectares of coastal hotels, all bombed. Prior to the war, the Kupari complex had 400 employees and around 2,000 beds. Now the government is searching for investment partners. The estimated cost to rebuild Kupari? Over 200 million euros. Croatian land registers are still far from EU standards. The mayor tells us it was a nightmare to clear the property rights for Kupari. It's important to stress that this Kupari reconstruction is a real challenge for us. Tourism is vital. Before the war, we had 1.5 million visitors and after that, our best year was 350,000. So reconstructing Kupari is a real economic challenge for us. Hotel Orlando had stood empty for 20 years. Just a few days ago, the damaged hotel was completely razed. It will be rebuilt into a luxury resort as part of a private-public package deal between Croatia and a private investor, upgrading a raft of hotels in the region for a total of 50 million euros. The deal is backed by the Croatian Bank for Reconstruction and Development, closely cooperating with the European Investment Bank. The hotel manager outlines his vision. So we are increasing the value of uh, our Croatian tourism by changing and going from three and two star hotels up to a four and five star hotels. By that, we are also creating new jobs. Upgrading, the key word in the Croatian tourism strategy, in a bid to stop the chaotic development tactics of the past. Today, tourism counts for 15% of Croatia's GDP, more than Italy or Spain. I pass here twice a day and remember the past. I can't believe nothing's been done until now. My wish is this will once again be a hotel complex. My working days are ending now, but I would love to see it become a place where our children can find work in the future. Will Kupari's golden days ever be revived? Maybe, but only if investors can be found. We leave the Croatian Far East and travel west to the island of Vir. Vir is famous for being rampant with illegal constructions and Alan is the man charged with chasing down the illegal builders. I'm the island's James Bond. We control everything. We check if people have all the necessary permits. Once I discovered an illegal builder. He had no permit. When our team took photos of the illegal construction, he tried to stop us. No, no pictures, he cried. Then he tried to bribe me. Alan, incorruptible, refused to take it. Estimates range between 150,000 and half a million illegal buildings in Croatia. When overbuilding grew out of control, the European Commission became concerned over compliance on coastal protection. 
One man bought a plot of land, but the authorities declared it unsuitable for building. When we discovered he was building there, we told him to stop. But he ignored us and went on building, telling us to take care of our own business. So we did. Two months later, we tore down his house. Unlike this perfectly legal lighthouse hotel, when the mayor of Veer was a boy, his father did like everyone else. He built his house first and asked for a permit later. We have 10,000 uh, households on the island, 2,000 have papers and 8,000 don't have papers. So uh, on this date, 6,500 uh, households uh, are uh, looking for legalization. When uh, those households get the papers, all of them can be used in tourism. Croatia is covered in legalization offices. The deadline to hand in paperwork, the day of EU accession. Matto built here without a permit, but legalized it years ago. He defends the illegal building boom of the past. To let people build without permits was the best possible solution at the time. A lot of refugees from Bosnia-Herzegovina came here because of the war. But today, Matto agrees on the need to respect some basic rules for practical reasons. Legislation is necessary because without it you can't be linked to local infrastructures like water and sewage. You don't get a license for apartment renting, no insurance in case something happens, nothing. Construction on Veer continues, but now owners follow the rules. They get a permit first and start building once it is secured. The island wants to change its image of being Croatia's centre of illegal construction. In his Zagreb office, the Croatian tourism minister delivers a tough message. Legalised now, if not, you will regret it. There are very precise propositions according which uh, the people can legalise uh, the building. If they can't uh, adopt to, 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 this, uh, to these propositions, the building will be destroyed. So far, only a few houses built close to the shore have been levelled. Builders say the law isn't implemented, so legalisation stayed low until last year, when the government amended the law to make the process cheaper and easier. Environmentalists aren't convinced. Every, every upcoming government uh, promising those illegal builders that uh, they will deal with their illegal building by uh, by legalizing it. This is of course wrong because you have to put a stop to it somewhere. Those kind of developments should be, uh, should definitely be uh, demolished. According to the European Environment Agency, one of the biggest environmental problems in Croatia is overbuilding. But as an EU member, Croatia seems set on ending illegal construction.